Welcome back to another show of Come Back Stronger, where we are bringing you stories from North Florida mostly. And these stories are all about people who have overcome adversity, challenges and setbacks, obstacles and injuries, and they have come back stronger to share their story with the rest of the world so that we can make this world a better place. And we are bringing you today the second part of an interview with a young lady named Michelle Madison. Tell us about Michelle, uh, Dana. Uh, Michelle will blow your mind. Michelle and her uh, 27 brief years has done quite a lot. Uh, she's found herself, uh, like so many young people do, in uh, a position where the odds are against her. Um, she, her. Her dad was not available to her and her mother and her older sister, um, so it was all on her mom to raise these girls. And then her mother unfortunately got sick and she came down with uh, stage four breast cancer. And that was quite, you know, as you imagine, that's very stressful, but yep. there was a lot of, there was some legal issues around it too that just mm -hmm. adds to the burden and adds to the stress and that catapulted uh, Michelle into a grown-up position pretty quickly. Yeah, she had to get a job at yes, 14 years old to take care of her mother right. with breast cancer. Yeah. And not only that, she shortly thereafter found out that she's suffering from Crohn's disease with put her, which put her in and out of the hospital while she's still dealing with her mother who's suffering from breast, can breast that, cancer. That's right. That's a lot on a young person's plate. Uh, at one point, uh, they were living out of their van. Mm -hmm. At one point, she had to march herself into somebody's office and say, listen, I'm smart and I'm a hard worker. Please believe in me. I know I'm only 14 years old, but I need a job. Mm -hmm. And nothing was beneath her. Bagging mm -hmm. groceries was fine. Mm -hmm. Whatever she could do was fine because uh, she needed to uh, become the resource that so yeah. many children her age are finding out about in the world. She had to become one for her mother and for her older sister. So. But the comeback story. The reason why we're here with this story is because this young woman has created a business called Farming the Future and she has shaken up the world because she has gone international with this business, yeah. teaching 27,000 students how to do sustainable farming at aquaponics. aquaponics. Yes, and yeah. this, and she is teaching people to be resourceful because of the resourcefulness that she had to gain when she was just a 14 year old yeah. trying to help her mother who had breast cancer. This is a fascinating story and we are bringing you now the second part of her interviews. We've got two more sections of her interviews. We are really excited for you to meet Michelle Madison. Right now we're gonna go to a commercial break and when we come back, we'll see actually the third interview with her, the third part of the interview with her and we can't wait for you to see it. I went to lunch with one of my former clients the other day and she's doing great. She took the money from her settlement and she started her own company buying and selling vehicles. Oh my God. Which is really cool because she was in a car crash and then needed a new vehicle and so now she's able to help other yeah. folks out. Most of our clients, they find that one of the most frustrating things is the dealing with the vehicle. Oh, well, lo losing your car can yeah. totally disrupt your life. You could, you could lose your livelihood over it. If you can't get to work, or, or you know, what's the worst thing with our clients is we're just trying to help them get well, but if they can't get to the, the health care that they need, you know, that's just another setback. One of the typical things about a comeback story is you take this pain and the struggles and the challenges that you've been through and you use that as the fire that kind of motivates you to do something good for other people. Yeah. And so I love that because now our client did exactly that, like literally to <laughs> the T. Welcome back to Come Back Stronger, where we're hearing the third part of the interview of Michelle Madison, who has won the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Award wow. for Farming the Future, which is a, a, a system that she developed. She's 27 years old and she's gone international with this system. Yes. She's shaken up the world. So listen to the third part of her interview and uh, we'll come back after that to kind of talk about the takeaways. All right, so I have to ask you something personal. Yes. You're sitting here in a wheelchair, and yes. what happened to you within the past year? How did you wind up in the wheelchair, and is that related to your Crohn's disease? So I've been, I started farming the future when I was 21. Mm -hmm. From 21 up until 25, it was just doing it and figuring it out and like, I'm doing this thing and I'm gonna change the world and I'm not gonna let anybody get in my way and here we go. Um, and apparently doing that is a good way to build momentum. Yeah, <laughs> and barrel your way right through. Don't take no for the answer. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, next thing I knew, you know, I had a I had a business that I that was supporting me and yeah, um, and growing exponentially and growing. Yeah, you know, I never had a place to live growing up. Mm. You know, I never had a safe place. Even sitting here now in where I am now there's always like the part of my head where it's like oh no am I gonna be homeless again <laughs> like mm, am I gonna wow. lose my house and so when I was 25 and you know when, when I was younger I, I had a goal like I was going to make sure that nobody could ever make us homeless again so I bought my mama house oh I bought my mama that's house at wonderful. 25 yeah it was really one of the most amazing things ever that's wonderful and um, it makes me teary because I know where the story is going. Unfortunately, it's hard. Yeah. Um, and so I get a phone call from my mom on March 9th. And on March 9th, she calls me and I have to take her to the hospital because she thinks she's having a heart attack. So I take my mom to the ER. Mm -hmm. And then um, that evening of March 9th, and like, I love my mom. Like, mm. I did everything. I gave my mom a house. I got, gave my mom cars. I took care of my mom my whole life. And, um, and then later that evening, um, it turned out that they gave her um, a CT scan. Mm -hmm. And she had a, um, a tumor larger than the size of a baseball Gosh. in one lung, and it was completely collapsed. And um, another tumor larger than the size of a golf ball in her other lung that was barely working. So she had stage four lung cancer. It had metastasized to her kidneys. It had metastasized to the lymph nodes in her back. Mm. And it was so far progressed that it had metastasized to her spine. And they didn't know how she was still walking because her spine had disintegrated and was pinching her spinal cord. And that's why they wanted to get her a CT because she was going to lose the ability to walk any day and they didn't know how she was still moving. I always stayed and I always took care of everything. I went back into the room. I looked at my mom and I said, you know, mommy, everything I've ever done my whole life, like buying you the house and the cars and the business and all the success that I've had, you know, like everything I've ever done has always just been to make you proud Aww. and to show you that you did a really good job raising us even though we went through everything that we went through and she you did, did a good job she did she did a wonderful job and she said you know what Michelle success is really great but at the end of the day family's the most important thing and the biggest mistake I ever made with my life was moving to Tallahassee and moving to Tallahassee is what killed me. Oh no. And then she put her readers on and picked up her phone and checked her text messages. And I gave her a kiss on the forehead and I left. And then she was dead the next day. Oh God, Michelle. It's not your fault. You have to know that it's not your fault. Is that kind of what has wound up with you being in the wheelchair now? My mom dying, I was already sick. I was on prednisone. I was already taking steroids, and I had been for a couple of months because mm -hmm. of everything that was happening. I didn't have time to be sick. And I kept going, and I just kept going. And I kept going, and I had employees, and I was like, okay guys, we're doing this. And you know, I did PPP, and I did all of the things, and I was, did the EADL, and here we go, <laughs> boom, you know? And I just kept going because I couldn't stop because I had other people who were still depending on me. You've got that fire in your belly. I do. And it turns out that I am not um, unbreakable. And so... I love that you just said that. I don't mean to interrupt you, but you've been through so much and you sit here and say you are not unbreakable. That's just such an amazing attitude to have. <sighs> it's so, I mean... I'm just kind of blown away by the fact that you just said that. The cool thing about being breakable is, is that when everything heals, you're a little bit taller. So maybe five foot now. Exactly. That's what I'm <laughs> hoping for. So, um, sorry to interrupt, but we've got to get a quick commercial break and we will be right back. Um, whoa. 
it's just there are hardly any words. Her mom was so important to her, but what I love about her is what drove her. And I really think deep down inside what drove, drives all of us is that her mom was depending on her. She wanted her mom to be proud. Right. And she had other people that were depending on her. Mm -hmm. And so that's what kept her going despite having Crohn's disease, despite losing her mother. Right. What an impressive young woman. Yeah, and, and I, I know that was a very difficult thing to listen to is the, the final exchange that she had with her mother. And you could tell her mother was probably angry. She mm -hmm. probably felt like, you know, I, I've, I've been, I got this real raw deal. And despite that, I've, I've tried. You mm -hmm. know, I've tried with my two girls. I've done mm -hmm. everything. Why do I have this health problem? Why does my daughter have this health problem? Why can't we catch a break? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and sometimes you want to put that in a, in a box mm -hmm. and maybe call it Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. Maybe call it that one thing. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't gotten divorced, if I hadn't gotten married, mm -hmm. if I hadn't been uh, too big, too small, too loud, too extra, too minimal, moved here, taken that job, my life would be better, my mm -hmm. life would be different, and um, maybe it would be, but I don't know, and it's not our place, I think, to criticize or, or Monday morning quarterback how someone processes right. the choices they've made at the end of their lives. I just am very glad that Michelle knew mm -hmm. yeah. that she had done everything that she yeah. could do. Mm -hmm. to make her, her mom's life better and to be less of a burden on her mother. Well, my favorite quote from Michelle is, I'm gonna change the world yes, she and is. nobody's gonna get in my way. Nope. Now that is the attitude of somebody who has a great comeback story. Yeah. That is the attitude of somebody that's really gonna shake up the world, which is what she's doing. And, and it doesn't mean you're not breakable. It doesn't right. mean you're unbreakable. Right. Uh, most of us break and, mm -hmm. and fall down and have to get back mm -hmm. up and that's where you find mm -hmm. the leaders. Mm -hmm. So, and she's certainly one. Yes, so we're gonna go back to, we're gonna go to a commercial. When we come back, we're gonna hear the last part of the interview with Michelle Madison. You know what's funny? When law firms advertise that they'll give a free consultation, every consultation we give is free, unless we can get you a settlement based on your injuries. Right. Every time you give me a call, it's free. Yeah. I yeah. want you to give me a call. Yeah. You know, we're not gonna charge you unless we actually get you something for yeah. your case. That's right. mm -hmm. You don't have to pay me anything unless I win the case. Right. And on top of that, I'm going to pay for all of the court costs and the deposition costs and medical records costs and expert opinion costs. All of that's coming out of my pocket. And if we don't win the case, then we eat those costs at no charge to right. you. Right. So we don't take a case we don't believe in because it's not in our interest. Right. And we don't minimize or devalue your case because that's also not in our interest. Right. So it makes everything fair. If you have a lawyer on a contingency fee, you can hire the very best right. lawyer. Welcome back to Come Back Stronger, where we're hearing the interviews of Michelle Madison, a young woman who has struggled through her life with a mother who had breast cancer, with Crohn's disease, in and out of the hospital, and she ends up creating Farming the Future, which is a, a business that is teaching children all over the world to be resourceful. And this young woman is so impressive. I want you to hear the last part of the interview, and then we're going to come back and talk about the takeaways. So has the stress from all that impacted your Crohn's disease? Because I know that Crohn's can be impacted by stress. It's really easy to pretend like you don't have a chronic illness when your chronic illness is invisible and no one else sees it too. And you're seen as this really strong woman mm -hmm. who goes out and just does everything. So I get home, I'm in bed, it's like 11 o'clock at night. I go to sleep and I wake up to try to go to the bathroom and I wake up and I probably make it to like right about my living room and I collapse on the floor screaming. Oh no. And I can't walk. What happened? Well, it's not because I couldn't feel my legs. Yeah. It's because I could feel my legs uh. way too much. I've never experienced anything. I mean, I, I blacked out on my floor yeah. from the pain and I literally, I have Crohn's disease and so I'm, already sick so obviously I have diarrhea so I'm now army crawling to the bathroom to try to make it I make it back from the bathroom to my living room floor and I pass out mm. luckily 
I have a wonderful executive assistant who works on Mondays. And so I'm screaming yeah. in my living room. And he walks in and he's like, oh my God, what's going on? Like, I can't walk. I'm yeah. like, help me. And he picks me up and he, you know, he helps me and he puts me back in my bed and he's like, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm like passing out. I'm like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brought me to the hospital. I'm screaming bloody murder. Yeah. They bring me into the back and I tell them like, I have Crohn's disease. This is a flare up. It's never been like this before. I literally can't walk but my joints are swollen mm -hmm. and I don't know if, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know if it's getting worse or if I'm doing damage. Like, I don't know, but it's never been like this before. And so they immediately, you know, they, they bring me in the back. They, they, I think they give me like morphine or something and I immediately pass out cause I hadn't slept in two days. And then I, I, I come back there, they do blood work and um, everything's fine. There's no reason why I can't walk. All of my labs are serious across the board. That's fascinating. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. Well, so what's next for you from a diagnostic standpoint? There's nothing wrong with me. I tell them, I'm, like, I'm on prednisone. My tests are going to come back bad. Look at my feet. Like, give me an extra. Like, help me. We think that you have drug-seeking behavior. <laughs> for prednisone? <laughs> right. Like, give, me, give me the steroids. <laughs> give me the steroids. <laughs> And um, so I leave the hospital and we discover something called Celebrex mm -hmm. through our own research with my primary care doctor who's like on her cell phone, like looking stuff up with me, Celebrex. So we try Celebrex and it takes for freaking ever, but it finally started working. And after two weeks of literally not being able to walk at all, I'd finally, like I can stand, uh -huh. I can stand, but I need a rheumatologist. Uh, They're booked out until mid-January. So we have been researching like you, like just it's all we do. Yeah. It's all we do. This is like 3% of Crohn's patients end up where when they get into a flare up, they can't walk. Mm. And it goes away, mostly. Once the swelling and inflammation goes down? Yeah. But the problem is, is what do you treat it with? Because you can't treat it with steroids. Celebrex, I can only be on for so long because the Celebrex is an NSAID. Yeah. And so that, like with Crohn's disease. So how are you, and in the meantime, you're in a wheelchair, but you've got your business to run. <laughs> so you've got to stay on top of that, right? Business is booming. It's great. I love it. I love what I do. I'm so lucky. And um, in fact, I can't even keep up with it. I, I should be working right now, in fact. <laughs> um, I never in a million years would have imagined that life could have been so amazing. Like growing up as a little girl, I thought I would be lucky. Like my dream growing up as a little girl, I was, I was gonna work for a corporation and I was gonna have a cubicle with the soft walls. Uh -huh, yeah. So I could put you know, uh, pictures of my family with little push pins. I wanted that so bad. That was because that was stability. Mm. I would have a, an income, you know, I, was, I would be educated, I'd be, you know, working in, a, in an office, I'd have a cubicle, push pins, my family. <laughs> and that was like, that was my dream, like that was it. And now, I get to travel uh -huh. the world doing what I do. I wake up every day at four o'clock in the morning and I cast a song called Vacation by the Dirty Heads. And the whole song is literally saying, hey, 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 I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. That's right. And life is literally the greatest thing in the world. And I can't wait to go to sleep so that way I can wake up sooner because this is awesome. Like, I will, I just started doing something and I still do it and I, get to help people and make a difference and do the things that I love. And I just, I don't think life could be any more exciting. And even though all of these things keep happening, and even though I might be in a wheelchair right now, this is still so much better than like my childhood for sure. Like this is a blast, I you love know? That. And like, and I get to still wake up and you know, 
my employees, like the people who I work with, my associates, they care about me and I care about them. I mean, I would have been stranded on the floor and like we have a really great team and I, like they are my family. And you're helping so many children and so many families. And not only am I helping children and families, but I'm not just helping them once, I'm actually giving them the tools to make their lives better. Right. Like, I'm so lucky to be where I am. I discovered science, I didn't discover science until I was in college. And it changed my entire mm -hmm. life. That's awesome. You know, and so being able to to expose kids to that, I mean, like, that that's the escape. I love that through all the tragedy that you've been through and all the challenges that you've had, you're still able to come to this side and say, you're so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really neat perspective. And I think people need to hear that because instead of getting down in the depths of despair with the tragedy and with the challenges and the setbacks, you're staying way above it and looking for the positive and looking for the good and looking forward. And that's really admirable. Well, I mean, we, we, we got to keep waking <laughs> up, you know, might as well make the most of it. Don't give you that much credit. That's funny. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show. It's been awesome. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> I will tell you this, this, what I love about this is it just goes to show that the challenge that, challenges we face in life are life's way of guiding us to become the highest and best version of ourselves. That's right. Because this is a young woman who, because of what she'd been through, she would have been satisfied with a cubicle where she could put pin up pictures yeah. on the cubicle. Yeah. But because of the challenges that she went through where she couldn't go to college, they said no when she wanted to go to college, she couldn't afford to go to college. She decided to do the um, farming the future thing. Yeah. And because of that, life pushed her into right. something greater than she ever imagined she would be. That's right. Is that yeah. is such an important point. Yeah, because yeah, so many times you, you you feel like you lack the motivation and it just doesn't yes. come or it just you can't create yes. it yourself. But sometimes, I mean, I was a big one like that. Sometimes uh -huh. my motivation came from somebody telling me, you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work for you. That's not mm -hmm. available to you. And I'm like, oh, watch this. Mm -hmm. but, but I think she was just like, wait a minute, that just had never occurred to me. Uh -huh. But I'm going to say yes. I'm going to pursue this and see what happens because when I say yes and I and I put myself out there, wonderful things happen. So why don't we just keep riding this out and see how long we've got? Because that's what I hope she does. I hope she keeps saying yes to every opportunity that comes with her and every opportunity that comes off the first time looking like a bad experience or you know a, a, or a bad situation. I think if she just keeps her her head straight, she'll see that she's for the gonna, opportunity it is. Well, she's going to come back stronger. What I love about her is she says. The thing about being breakable is that when you heal, you come back a little bit You're taller. A little bit taller. That's exactly right. Well, I'm going to say come back a little bit stronger. <laughs> but I but I will tell you she is I mean that is the perfect yeah. attitude for a comeback story. So I believe this young woman is just getting started. I do too. I do yeah. too. I think I think she's just one of those people you're just going to see extraordinary things from um, you know, she she didn't get the the breaks that we would have hoped for, and she got told no a lot. And it's so hard, you know. I want to kind of get to, to the feminist aspect of it. You know, you you already think the world's an uphill climb. You yeah. already think it's going to be hard. You already have mm -hmm. been let down by the most important man in your life. So I'm just really impressed with everything that she knows is a real you know uh, task uh, and 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 mountain to climb. She, she just said, no, I'm not having it. I'm not going to be one of those. I'm going to make this happen. I love her. She's going to make it happen. Well, we're going to make a commercial happen. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to talk about our other favorite takeaways from the Michelle Madison interview. I recently had a new client, and she suffered a mild traumatic brain injury. Okay. And she had no idea what had happened that caused her to be injured. Mm. Um, Gotcha. But it turns out she had fallen into a pit at an oil change oh. station. And it was 100% oh, their fault. Oh, wow. But, she, but her injury made her not even understand. Her injury, and it makes, it, me, it makes me so frustrated because mm -hmm. folks that suffer concussions or mild traumatic brain injuries, it's really difficult for them to know to what remember, happened right? and to understand yeah. the difference in what their life was and what it is now yeah. because of the nature of their condition. And so the insurance companies 
need to recognize the full value of that. Yeah. yeah. But Instead of taking advantage of that very unique situation. It took yeah. her family telling her, you need to call an attorney. Right. Mm -hmm. Her family coming with her to the appointment mm -hmm. to say, these are the differences mm -hmm. to get her in there. And now we're able to help her. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, welcome back to Come Back Stronger. We just heard the final interview of Michelle Madison, impressive woman who who did everything. Excuse me, who had a challenging childhood with a mother with breast cancer, Crohn's disease, in and out of the hospital, and she comes back stronger, mm -hmm. starts farming the future. It's gone international, super successful. My favorite, one of my favorite quotes. I've I've said many of them, <laughs> but but one of my favorite quotes is that she said, "I had a goal." Nobody is going to make me homeless again. Yeah, yeah. What, what kind of, I mean, think about that for a minute. We all are motivated. We want to do great things. But to be able to be disciplined enough and make something like this a reality. I'm going to give my mother a home and I'm 25 she bought her years mother, old. Her, she bought her mother a Beautiful home. Homes. It's like no one's ever going to put me in a quarter. No one's ever going yes. to take my autonomy from me. No one's ever going to take my agency from me. We're never going to be under somebody's thumb. We're never going to have another boot on our neck. I love that. And I just, I, I'm still in awe and I still wonder. I'd like to spend so much more time with her and yeah. just understand how does a 25 you know year old woman get that resolve well you can see from that quote that it was the pain that she went through that became the fire in fire, her belly man. that has motivated her to become as successful as she is yeah. that's that is one of the keys to a great comeback story absolutely great um what what was your other favorite takeaway from it um i just you know i identify so so much with her because you know, there are just all these little setbacks. I think she said she was in how many different schools? Oh, five, like you know? five different middle schools, so seven many. different high schools, or she couldn't even finish high school. So yeah. many adverse childhood events that would just cause so many people to look at this child and go, oh my goodness, I don't think she's going to be able to make it in this world. I think well, we're going to made it. She's going to be dependent, but she says, no, not me. I'm not going to be dependent. I'm going to be a leader. She made it in a big way. She came back stronger. We really enjoyed this interview. Hope that you come back next week for another interview. Come back strong. And you know what the insurance company offered him? Five thousand really? dollars. He's completely, he's completely blind, and they offer him five thousand yeah. dollars. Ask him, ask him to sign a release. To a lot of people especially when they're hurting and when they're down and when they're vulnerable. $5,000 is a life-changing amount of yeah. money. Yeah. And they're not looking at the mm -hmm. value of what has been lost. They're not looking at what it would take to, to make that person whole, which mm -hmm. is our job. Yeah. That's our job. Their job isn't. Their job is to save the insurance company money. Right. And they look at this person and they go, hmm. I bet $5,000 would get your full attention. Right. And they mm -hmm. come in and they dangle it yeah. with a settlement release. And then mm -hmm. once you sign it, you're done. You can't come back to us and ask us to make, wave a magic wand and make that go away. That can't go away. My client didn't accept the $5,000. We took them all the way to trial. We got a $5 million verdict. 